Our blue planet is an amazing one. 71% of the Earth is covered in water, and we all rely on the ocean for a healthy planet. In Australia, we have over 4,000 reefs and more than 35,000 kilometres of coastline, with millions of plant and animal species calling these reef habitats home. But our reefs are in trouble. As human populations grow, it places increasing pressures on our marine ecosystems. Reef Check Australia can help communities take action on local marine issues through volunteer reef monitoring, education and conservation. Reef Check Australia trains volunteers to collect reef health information using a globally standardised method. The information collected can help detect long-term trends, helping us understand how our reefs are changing over time. It's a big place to monitor and protect. You can help support our Reef Check efforts by becoming a reef searcher and sharing what you see on the reef. Reef Search is a program that allows any snorkeler, diver or reef walker to identify and record some of the same indicators monitored by our trained volunteers during a Reef Check survey. Your participation helps us collect reef information in more places more regularly. This DVD is a step-by-step -step guide to help you on your way to becoming a reef searcher. You can refer back to your reef search guide and slate at any time for more information. Hi, my name's Katie. I'm not a marine biologist, but I do care about our ocean and I'd like to know more about what I'm seeing when I visit the reef. Today, I'm going to show you just how easy it is to use the reef search slate. First things first, I've got to think about safety. I've told someone where I'm going and what I'm doing. I've got sun protection on, I've checked the conditions and I'm ready to go. Okay, so the plan is to spend 10 minutes swimming slowly along the reef at a constant depth, recording what I see within a two metre wide area. My arm span is about two metres. I'll be looking for key reef organisms, substrates or what's making up the reef and reef impacts. I'll also have the chance to write down any additional observations. I should be able to see all of these things from the surface, even as a snorkeler. I'll point out items from each category today as we go. I'm going to check over the reef search slate to see what I can fill in now. In the site condition section, I can fill in, well, I know what reef I'm visiting, the name of the site, the day, the date, and the time. Everything else I'll fill in when I finish my reef search. I've got my slate, a camera to take pictures of what I see. I'm ready, let's go. The organism's cited category contains key target animals, which include some of the same organisms that trained reef check volunteers monitor during their reef check surveys, because of their economic and ecological importance. These organisms are what we call indicators, good signs of healthy or unhealthy reefs. Tracking their abundance can help give us clues to how reef health is changing over time. You can record these animals by ticking the correct box for the total number of target organisms. You may want to tally to keep count as you go. Anemone fish are commonly called clownfish and can be found nestled in amongst anemones. They can be orange or red to black and have one to three vertical white stripes on their body. It's unlikely that you would find an anemone fish without their namesake and home, as the shelter of the anemone's stinging tentacles helps to keep them safe. Both anemones and their residents are harvested for the aquarium trade and can be susceptible to over-exploitation. More than 7,000 different fish species live on reefs, with many different roles. Larger fish mean older, more productive individuals, so we tally all fish over 20 centimetres. Here's a quick tip. There's a ruler down the side of your reef search slate, so you can check a fish's length. Giant clams are an important source of food in many countries, and their shells are valuable in the souvenir trade. You can recognise giant clams for their wavy shell and colourful tissue, called a mantle. Clams are filter feeders, so they are very sensitive to water quality, making them a great indicator for reef health. These may look a little strange, but sea cucumbers have a very important job. They are the vacuum cleaners for the sea. Sea cucumbers eat sand and sediment, clean it and pass out clean sand, therefore recycling nutrients from dead animals and plants. They are also eaten in many countries. Sea cucumbers come in many colours, so keep an eye out for their sausage-shaped bodies. Spiky sea urchins graze on algae, so they are essential to the reef's health, preventing algae from smothering coral and cleaning space for new corals to grow. They are eaten in some countries and sometimes can be hard to see, tucked under legends. They have a mouth on the bottom and plenty of spines, which are sharp, so don't touch them. Crown of thorns starfish are large sea stars, or echinoderms, which means spiky skin. Boy, do these guys live up to their name. Their large spines hold toxic venom, so never touch them. They are also quite the voracious eater. 
expelling the stomach on top of coral to literally liquefy the coral tissue to slurp it up. With their big appetites, large numbers of crown of thorns starfish can decimate a reef. Now we have a good idea of what living animals we're looking for. Remember, we're also looking for substrate or what's making up the reef. It's important to know what's making up the reef because this structure provides shelter, food and habitat for many marine organisms. And helping watch changes in reef cover can provide important information on whether reef habitats are changing over time. You can record what you see by ticking one suitable box to show the area covered by each substrate category. Try to think about what you've seen the most of as you swim. Corals come in a wide variety of colours and shapes. They can be hard or soft. Hard corals help build reef structure, while soft corals provide shelter and food. To find corals, look for structures that have detail and texture compared to other substrates. Visit your reef search guide for hints and tips to identify this diverse live coral category. Algae are underwater plants. Plants get their energy from the sun and form the bottom of the food chain. Some algae is good for the reef, but too much may suggest a problem. Algae can be really diverse, but what we are looking for is long, thin, stringy algae that moves in the water currents. It can also come in different colours like red, brown and green. Rock is any hard, solid substrate where other organisms can attach. Rock may not seem very exciting, but it helps us gauge available space for new plants and animals to grow. Sand is any small particulate matter about the size of salt grains. It may contain pieces of shell or rock. Sand is an important feeding ground for fish and invertebrates, such as sea cucumbers, sea stars and sea urchins. But try to avoid sand-only areas in your reef search. There isn't much reef there. Rubble is made up of pieces of rock as well as dead or broken coral, up to 15 centimetres. Rubble may be produced naturally from erosion or may suggest high levels of physical damage to the reef. I saw some amazing things on my reef search. Now, I'm here with Jody, Reef Check team leader, to find out a little bit more about what I saw. Jody, can you tell me what this is? That looks like a bit of broken coral. You can actually tell because of the broken edges and they're quite sharp. Coral damage can be caused by natural events or by humans. Storms and cyclones cause pieces of coral to break off and sometimes flip coral colonies upside down. Anchors, marine debris and careless snorkeling, reef walking and diving practices can also cause accidental damage to the reef. We'll ask you to record these on the impact section of your slate as well as looking for white coral and marine debris. Higher numbers of these impacts may suggest a problem in the area. Remember that this section has numerical categories so you may want to tally as you go and then tick the right box at the end of your research. For rubbish, make sure that you collect both the type of rubbish and also the amount that you saw. OK, what about this photo? Ah, that looks like a bit of white coral. Now, white coral can actually be white for a variety of reasons. It could be bleaching, coral disease or scars as well. When a coral becomes stressed, they expel the tiny algae living in their tissues. These algae provide corals with food and most of their colour, so the result is a white or bleached coral. Corals can also be white because they have a disease that eats away their tissue, leaving white bare skeleton, or because something like a fish or predator has eaten away the coral tissue, again leaving just bare skeleton behind. But don't worry, we're not asking you why the coral is white, we're simply interested in how much of the white coral you're seeing on your reef search. Rubbish in the ocean, called marine debris, is a big problem. It takes a long time to break down and can cause devastating effects for ocean and coastal animals. Different types of marine debris have different impacts, so it's important to record what type of rubbish you see. The categories we record are fishing gear, metal and glass, plastic and rope and cord. We'll also ask you to record specific numbers of how many items you see in each category. Remember, you'll be looking for all of these things while you swim. And it's really handy if you've got a camera because you can take pictures of everything you've been recording along the way. But it's not a necessity. Well, thanks, Jodie. No worries, Katie. And remember, to make your research count, upload the information you collected, as well as any photos that you got on your reef search, to www.reefcheckaustralia.org. Now you know just how easy it is to be a researcher. Join me and Reef Check Australia in capturing a snapshot of what is happening in our oceans. Get involved. Together, we can save our reefs and oceans. I'll see you in the water.